Take care of yourself, Messiah. Messiah, he said, take care of yourself. He said, okay. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Yeah, so uh, let's get started by a word of prayer. Sister Phoebe, do you want to pray for us? Father God, we thank you today. We thank you because of who you are. We thank you because you are a great God and you love us unconditionally. And we just want to continue to praise you and to 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 look unto you because you know our hearts are thy for Father. As we um, start to get into your word, Father, open our hearts and our minds, Father, and to help us to draw a little bit more closer to you, Father. Where will we be without you, O oh God? Where will we be without your word, O oh Father? You said, study to show that self approval unto you, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth, Father. And you are all truth, Father. And that is the only way is to believe in you, Father. And we thank you that you have chosen us. We didn't choose you, you chose us, Father. And we just honor you and we praise you, Father. And we continue to lift you up and we continue to seek you while you may be found and call upon your name while you are so near us, oh God. And we just thank you and we praise you, oh God, for in all things, this is a day that you have made. So let us rejoice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. And no matter what, oh God, we just continue to, to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, so today, um, let me again welcome us back for our house fellowship, which is taking place via Zoom. I know there are a number of people who are joining us uh, on Facebook Live because we are also streaming live on our church Facebook page. Um, and as you you all know, remember from the first week of uh, first Monday of September, we began a new series. And the first one we did on the Monday of uh, September 7th was knowing the will of God. And then we uh, looked at identifying the voice of God. That was last Monday, so that we may, we may be able to uh, know when we hear these voices, is it God's voice? It is, is it the voice of uh, the enemy or is it your own voice? So we looked at that at length and it was so uh, it was so awesome, it was great. Yeah, and so today um, we are going to look at a new topic which is understanding the time, understanding the time. And uh, we're gonna read the main scripture, it's going to be Ecclesiastes chapter three, from verse one to eight. Oh, we're gonna read up to 11. Ecclesiastes three to 11, chapter three, verse one to 11. You got it? Anyone who has it can, you can read it. Ecclesiastes three to 11, chapter three, verse one to 11. This is eight, yeah says to everything there is a, a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plan and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to care and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh mm -hmm. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Time to keep. What profit hath he that worketh in what wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart, 
so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Amen. Amen. And so this is about knowing and understanding the time, because as we all know, right now many things are happening, and unless we are uh, keen or you know we are observant enough to understand what these times really stand for we we might end up um you know i i just read an article today of someone who has been through a lot of of of, uh, of challenges uh she lost her husband and uh, uh she, you know she says that when she was so low she had nobody to turn to there were no friends, no one uh, was there for her. And that now she's done, she's done with religion and and done with the, with, with God. But you see, it's, an, it's a matter of understanding that, you know, God allows these things to happen at different times for different reasons. You know, we all know uh, when, about Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, uh, that I will say that God uh, God tells Jeremiah that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I already ordained you a prophet. So it means that already God foreknew us even before we were formed in our, in our mother's wombs. And he has ordained us for the, the, the various um, offices or the various ministries or the various purposes that God has made us to accomplish in, in this world. And whether you are still in school or whether you're working or uh, even in ministry everything happens according to god's plan and according to god's time we cannot rush god to do what he has planned not to do at that particular time that's why as we've just read uh from verse one in ecclesiastes three that to everything there is a season to everything there is a season Everything means everything, not just good things, not just bad times, but to everything there is a season. The time for every purpose under heaven. Under the heavens, everything has a time, its time and its season. A time to be born and a time to die. There's a time that God has already uh, planned for you to be in this world. You cannot um, twist God or challenge him to extend it or, or you know, or otherwise. I know we, we may want to refer to the story of Hezekiah in the Bible, that God gave him more years. Yes, already God had predestined that he had planned to give him those more years because our God, he is not one that will change his word or regret because he knows that if he sends this message to you, this message may help you turn from what you're doing to do something different or it may help you to correct you and so god may allow you to receive that message that you know put your house in order and all that but again he knows that if you know what to do if you know that you need to turn to him then he is able to extend your your life and so we see in verse 2 there's a time to plant and a time a time to pluck what is planted. If you are going to sow a seed, you definitely have to wait until the time for harvest comes. You can't just go and uh, you know plant corn. You drop the seed of corn in the soil, and two days later, oh, I'm hungry. I wanna go and harvest my corn and make some uh, popcorn <laughs> or make you know make some flour out of it. It is not possible. There is time for this seed to get into the soil, die, and then germinate and become a plant. And then the plant, you know, brings out the, the cob of maize of, of corn and you are able to harvest your corn. So there's time to plant and time to reap. Basically a time to plant and a time to, to harvest. And there's a time to kill and a time to heal. There are times when we go through so much pain we go through uh, a lot of things around us, but also God always hears the cry of his people. We all know about the story of Israel when the Israelites were in Egypt 
Bible says that God appeared to Moses and he told Moses, I've heard the cry of my people. So I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go so that they may worship me. And so we, we might be going through many things around us, many challenges happening around us, but it does not mean that God has forgotten about us. Mm -hmm. He is God. He's allowing what is happening to happen at this particular time because his time for healing is at hand at the appropriate time that he has purpose to do what he wants to do with our lives god will surely do it because we belong to him the bible says in psalms 24 that the earth is the lord the earth is the lord's and its fullness thereof and everything that dwell in it so we are all god's property we are all god's people everything that we see and i always like to say this there are many things that we don't see. There are many, many things, maybe in their millions or trillions that we don't see with our naked eyes. But all that belongs to God. You know, a simple thing that we don't see is the wind. We don't see the wind, but it blows anyway. It blows from one, you know, uh, corner to the other corner. The wind blows, you can see its impact, you can see what it does, it can blow and, and come in form of tornado or storm and cause a lot of havoc, but you don't, you don't see that wind, you only see the impact of the wind. So there are many things that God does or God has created, which our eyes have not even seen, our minds have never even imagined, nor our ears heard about them. And so whatever happens, whether in good or bad times, we need to know that those are times, those are seasons that come and go. And there's a time to cast away stone. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance in verse 4 of Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 4. Now, I know uh, David says in Psalms 30 verse 5, that, that weeping may endure for the night or morning may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So during the night, yes, you may be going through a difficult time. It might be your night time when things are not working right in your life. Maybe academically, maybe for our children, uh, you're wondering, oh, so when will I grow up and become like my daddy or my mommy? Why am I going through all this? Uh, you know, difficult times at school, have to work and all that. It's just a time that you are growing and you need to be patient with God because through this difficult time of growth, because growth is a difficult time, the difficult period that you are growing because there are many things which you're not, you're not used to, you haven't, you haven't been there and you are growing through it. But God will bring you through that and when you look back through that growth process, then you'll be thankful when your joy comes in the morning, when you have done all the studies, done all the revisions, and you've passed your examination, you've graduated, qualified for a, for a good, a good uh, you know, career, you want to become a, a, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, yeah. a nurse, whatever you want to become, a business person. When you graduate and get your diploma or your degree with, with flying colors as a, as a young person, you will be so, so happy. And so the pain of growth will now turn into joy. It's coming into joy. And a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse 5. There are times when we must learn to say yes, and also there are times we must say no. I know it's difficult at times to say no, but the Bible says there are times when we must say no. Don't embrace what is not uh, according to God's, uh, uh, God's direction. If you are guided to do something by the Holy Spirit, there will be a confirmation that this is the voice of God because we, we, we learned already about hearing from God. Now, when you have learned how to hear from God, if God says, do it, do it. 
if he says do not do it, then do not do it. Because there are times we commit sin, there are those sins that we commit, but at times we also sin by omitting. You know, the Bible talks about thou shall and thou shall not. So when God speaks to you, now that you know how to hear from, from God, when he speaks to you and he says, thou shall, then you need to obey and do what God says. And if he says thou shall not, then you need to obey and, and, uh, and don't, do not omit God's commandments. Amen. Verse 6, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. So what we are required to do as Christians, there are things we cannot keep which are not of the kingdom or which are not godly. Maybe these things, we acquired them or we came across them while we were growing up in, uh, in, the Christ, in, in, in our walk uh, in life. But now when you give your life to Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17 reminds us that we are new creatures. So all these things need to go away. And, uh, and so if that when that time comes, when you give your life to Christ, that th those things which are not of God, you have to let them go. So that's the time to just throw them away and God will replace with what belongs to the kingdom. A time to tear and a time to, to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak. Not every time we have to open our mouths to speak, 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 speak. Paul says in many words, there is sin. Let us be cautious of too many words. Let's be quick to listen and slow to speak. Only speak when you are led uh, by the Holy Spirit because he'll give you, God will give you wisdom. He'll give you wisdom. You'll be able to speak what is wise, what is godly, and not just speak anyhow. Anything you want to talk about, you want to criticize, you want to lament, you want to complain. And the enemy will use those lamentations and those words of complaint to affirm your fears, to make your fears come real. When you say it is impossible, you're only telling the devil that you have you are agreeing in the impossibility that our god is not able but if you tell the enemy no i believe i can do it because the bible says that you know he's um, he can do all things you know our god is able to do all things you know the bible says that i mean i can do all things in philippians 4 13 and uh, and, and ephesians 3 20 he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what I can ask or imagine. So when you, ref we'll be talking about the having to know the word, that's when we hear from God. When you have all these uh, weapons, spiritual weapon, which is the word of God, the sword of God in your hand, you are able to uh, know when to open your mouth and speak the wisdom or just listen. Time to love and time to hate a time of war and a time of peace. We go through so much, but there is peace, there is hope in our God. And verse 11 says, so he has made everything beautiful in its time. Everything that we see, God has, has made them beautiful in their time. And so our God is a God of orderliness. Things don't <coughs> just happen. He is a God of orderliness. There is time for everything, and he has made everything beautiful, as the Bible says, in God's own time. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is there yeah. any question so far? Is there any observation so far before we look at understanding the time? Do you have any question, any observation? I was just giving an introduction of how, um, um, you know, how, how God works and how he does things in his own time. And so time is a resource. We must give account of every moment we have in this world from birth to till death. 
God has given us this time that we may not just misuse the time and throw the time away. You know, some people say life begins at 40. It's not biblical. It's not uh, supported by the scripture. For our young children, our, 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 the youth, start doing what is right now because this is the time that God expects you to put your hand into doing what is right. For those who are not youth anymore, it is not too late. You can still make it up and start doing things godly way, in, the godly, in, a, in, in a godly manner. Because from now, when you hear the word, is when you need to start doing what is right before the eyes of God. Because you're going to be accountable. You're going to be accountable. God searches the heart and he examines the mind. So he knows that in this particular period of time that he has given to you, you have not done anything or you are doing so much. And what is more beneficial is about your soul and not about getting the whole world. It's about your soul. And so you are gonna be, we're gonna be accountable for every time we spent in this world. And that is uh, from birth to death because it's a series of time events which must be accounted for before the almighty God. It is a period, it is a series. It's a, it's a, it's a cycle of how we, you know, of life. So we have to be accountable before our God. So every cycle of life, childhood, adolescence, as I said, and maturity will also be accounted for what you did in your childhood and what you did in your teenage and what you did as an adult. All this, God expects you to be accountable of how you spent the time that he gave to you. It doesn't belong to us, time belongs to God. And because time belongs to God, he wants feedback, he wants report, he wants accountability of how he spent his time. So since there was a time of birth for everyone, there must be a time of death also. So time, as we saw, the times are different when you are born to the time that you die. But between these two times of birth and death, you need to use that time uh, to understand what God wants you to do and to use it. And how do you understand what God wants you to do with that, that time? Maybe let me pose this as a question. How do we understand how God wants us to use the time between birth and death? So Janelle, I see you there. Hi, Janelle. I am thankful. How are you? I'm blessed. <laughs> I, I just asked a question. Maybe you want to contribute on this. I asked, how do we understand the time between birth and death? How do you understand uh, how God wants us to use it? Hmm. Um, maybe by, um, by when we come to Bible study, for example, we should be... Uh, applying those scriptures and applying the lessons that we're taught by you or whomever the instructor mm -hmm. is applying it to life and trying to live accordingly and to his word based on our Bible lessons. Amen. Yes. And, and trying to be an example to um, the young people that may be before, after us, try to live our lives accordingly. Amen. We hear from God, from the word, through the word. Bible study, reading the word and praying. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I saw your hand was up. I wanted to um, pray to God and ask him what he wants us to do. Yeah. And yeah, ask him, um, mm -hmm. like, we should, like, pray, pray to him and ask him, that, like, if we should stay away from this certain type of people. And stay away from this um, type of stuff, like bullying and all that stuff. Amen. Yes, for the young people, you have to know what is right. And for you to know what is right is to listen to your parents, listen to your teachers, listen to those who are older than you, who are giving you good advice, listen to your instructors, read also the word of God that you may know it also as young people. 
and uh, look at people who are good role models so that you may avoid doing what is not right, uh, whether, whether at school or with your friends. Amen. Yeah, I think um, when you talk about um, what we should do between the time of birth to the time of death, we have to understand that when God created us or God allowed us to live, he had a purpose with our lives. And he has a time frame for our lives. He has, he has, a, he has a specific, we have a specific length of our life to live, not just to live, but according to his purpose. So it depends on how you are fitting in the purpose of God. And sometimes we see, we see people uh, die early or we see people die very late. And sometimes we say this was a premature death. And sometimes we say this person uh, lived his life well or her life well. You know, the way we see life is not the way God sees life. God sees, what God sees in us is a seed that he planted in us. And as we, as this seed grows and it bears fruits, and after it has bore the fruits, when the harvest time comes, this timing of harvest, which is in his hand, then he can harvest. And so the purpose that he has sent us to do by living, living his purpose and living his will. And that's why Jesus said, I have to do the work of the one who sent me when it's still daytime because night is coming when I will not be able to do it. So the life that we are living when we are still able is our daytime. But night comes when you are not able to do it. And so the time between our being born and the time to our expire, the expiry of the purpose of God in our lives, God has given us that date. And when that date comes, when the purpose of God is fulfilled, doesn't matter how old you are, even if he fulfills his purpose, even if you are only 15 years, when the purpose is done, he takes you home. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it, it is good to understand, to want to know the purpose of God, that we may live and fit in the purpose of God and in the timing of God, that we may not delay the, 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 the completion of God's purpose in our lives, or we that we may walk in the, in, in the perfect will and in the perfect purpose of God concerning our lives. Amen. So Janelle, I see your hand is raised up. Yes, as she was talking, a question came in my head and I've often wondered this, is that I, I was always thinking to myself that maybe when a child is born that mm -hmm that child's life and or soul is, is given to that person to somewhat shape that individual, to learn, teach them maybe how to love and how to teach and how to mold a soul. And, and as she was talking, those, this, these, this is more in the form of a question than a state than me it's like I'm sharing something and then I'm asking a question at the same time. Um, that like when a child is young, that we teach them, we love them, we nurture them. But it, this soul was like given to, given to us or to the parent to learn something. You, it's like when a child is that small, I know they can't make a choice or they can't, they don't know to love God or respect God or go follow his, his commandments. Or, and so the parent is teaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering the difference between that age group until the child is able to speak for themselves, 
what is the difference between what a child is being given and what what that that soul may be teaching that adult because i know that there's some things that god gives us as parents to teach our children because like he's preparing the mom or whatever and the dad like the nine months that the child is baking inside the mom and then when the child gets here mom already has some things you know in inside of her that she gives the child but then when a child gets to a certain age they learn on their own from that point but that the children that don't live far after that you know what i mean like some kids are born like at six months nine months 12 months you know and and something happens to them sit down and wait when something happens to them mm -hmm. early in life and they have an early expiration date, I wonder how does that, that part, I'm just, I know I might be getting way, way off, but I'm just curious that part. I'm just curious about how that works. What do you guys, what can you give me some um, feedback on that? I was just yeah, curious. You know, you're, you're very right. You're very right. When a child is born, basically the child will, will pick habits from what the child sees mm -hmm. because the child can't just come with a, with his or her own habits from the womb no. right and, and a baby is born in humility and that's why you see a baby is as humble and as harmless as you can imagine right until this baby begins to get exposed to the environment now what did jesus say he said, what did he just, just tell the adults? Bring these children mm -hmm. to me. Right. Let them come. Let them come to me. So we as parents, mm -hmm. we are supposed to release our children to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't just because he was there with them and he wanted mm -hmm. to carry some, some babies on, on his lap. So he said, bring them to me. Mm -hmm. He was speaking to generations to come. Right. That these little children, the kingdom of heaven is of like such people. Because these are kids who are walking in humility, who need to be guided on what to do. And if they are guided, they will keep the law. And they will mm -hmm. not, for, the law says, if we train them in mm -hmm. the way that they should go, then when they grow up, they will not forget what we already put in them, what they've learned. Right. So right. If Jesus knew that this is, in fact, he was just referring to the scripture, like bring mm -hmm. them to me because the kingdom of heaven is of such people. So these mm -hmm. kids, when they are born, they are born in humility. Mm -hmm. You know, they are born, of course, we are all born sinners because of the nature of man. So right. we still have to, 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 to confess our sins and, mm -hmm. and, and be, believe, confess, mm -hmm. and we are saved by Correct. grace through faith. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus says, bring them to me. So if we do not let these kids go to Jesus, if you want to go to church and leave your kids at home and right. they're going to be growing up on the television mm -hmm. and you are growing in the word, there right. is no way you're going to get these kids again back to the word because they never knew the word in the first place. They never knew you as mm -hmm. this woman of God. They never knew what you stand for, what you believe in. And right. when Jesus said, bring them, he said, so he, 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 what he meant was, we need to show them the way to the Father, show them the way to the Lord. And mm -hmm. then the environment will now, uh, if we don't teach them in the ways of the, of the word of God, then the surrounding will teach them in its own way. Mm -hmm. And then that's why we find now things happening out here. Uh, of course, we still have challenges, even those we bring to, 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 to church and at times out of the influence from friends and all that, because it's a spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. a spiritual warfare. But according to your question, it is, you know, us as parents to help these children to see what God wants them to become and to do by emulating us and also by, by teaching the word and engaging them into prayer. It, it is never too early to engage mm -hmm. those kids. It is never too early. I don't know if that uh, gave you. You some did. Feedback. You did. You helped me a lot. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Sister Phoebe, you had something to say. 
Well, um, everybody said just about everything. Um, I, I would just add on just a little bit that, you know, um, as we um, as we live for Christ, we are the light. And, and whatever we do, you know, like you said, we are accountable for it. And that's whether we're rearing our children, bringing them up. And, and you know, each one of us have a purpose and plus God put that desire in our heart. So um, like I said, what, what we do, we do hardly unto God and we are supposed to let our light shine. So um, um, that we can help um, draw that individual to Christ or draw men to Christ because that is the purpose is to um, live holy for him because you know he's holy and to win souls for him yes but at times there are, there are those times when people want to live through time with guilt so yes do you allow do you allow that guilt to be part and parcel of a, of a person I mean if you look at your history and you see uh, all these things that maybe time you wasted and all that. Um, now, this is a question I'm putting to everyone. Do we let this guilt be part of life and say, well, everybody has a history, like the world says, that everyone has history anyway. So do we live with that guilt because the world says that everyone has history or what do we do? It's an open question. I, I believe we are all Christian. We are all <laughs> born again. Yeah, I think um, based on uh, on how much time you have wasted in life, it may cause you to live with guilt. Because mm -hmm. as the Bible says, there is time for everything. So um, when you should be, when you should, for example, when you should be having a child mm -hmm. and the time that you God has given you and God it has been just convinced you have been God can, has convinced you that this is the right time for you to have children right but you say no I'm not ready let me enjoy my youth my, my youth let me enjoy my life let me enjoy my time then when you get to 50 or 55 that's when you want to get a child. I, I don't think, yes, it may be a miracle. It may be a miracle child. But sometimes you may feel like, I wish I had these kids. Uh, I, I wish I had a baby when I, I was able. So there, there are some things that when it's the right season and the right time, and we feel like we want to do things on our, our own way, then that season passes us. Mm -hmm. And then that season, you cannot, you cannot reverse it. Right. So you, what you remain living with is the guilt of mm -hmm. why you did not comply to the season that God had brought you in and right. you did not fit in that season. Mm -hmm. So time has passed, age has gone. So you cannot go back. You cannot reverse your age and you cannot reverse the time. So right. what you remain with is the guilt. Mm -hmm. Yes, we talk about restoration. God will restore. But there are some things that when the season is passed, it will take extra grace for you to catch up with the other season that God has, because he, he aligns the season. Every, in the, in the entire life, there's every season and every time. Amen. Okay. Any other in, input on that? I, mean, I you know, I may be saying this wrong, but, um we're talking about time and season and we're talking about maybe like the past, like you wanted, you wanted to have a child or you did something that was wrong or whatever. Um, I think like I heard, I think the scripture said, don't something, don't look back, don't look back to the, the plow or whatever, but just go on, go forward. But also if you have guilt, um, now I'm not saying you know it's it's not easy. It's not easy sometimes to give up the guilt, but 
we have the word of God. We have prayer. We have, you know, we can, if we confess our sins and our faults or whatever, he's able to forgive us. So we have the Holy Spirit, you know, like greater is he that's in us. We have that spirit to, to move us by leaps and bounds. It doesn't matter what happened in the past, because even if it was a sin, his grace covers it all. And we can be like right where he wants us to be, like as if nothing have never happened. I, I'm, I'm just saying because I'm a woman of faith and I'm just saying there has been some some great trials and tribulations in my life that I, I can't even, you know, I can't even go into it. But um, it's just the grace of God and his mercy that made me to be an overcomer and um, we overcome by the words of our testimony. So yeah. I may not be on point. I don't know. But this is that's how I, I, I feel and that we just can't just stay, stay stagnate or just be still and the guilt are to remember our faults or our sins because I don't think God wants us to be like that. Yes, and uh, I, I totally, totally agree. At times it's hard for people to let go. But, yeah, me, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. But the, the, question, the question we need to ask ourselves is does God delight in our ministry or does he delight in our praise? That's what you, that's the first question you need to ask yourself. Does God delight in your misery or does he in your misery or does he delight in your praise for him? And you know, if you look at the story of David, uh, there are many things that King David did. And of course, the, the main sin that people know is about the adultery against the wife of, of Uriah. But another sin that David committed that people don't even look at it as sin was when David decided to count the children of the, of the house of Israel. Now, this same David, we hear, we see of great things that God did through him. But look at what Psalms tells us, Psalms 1, which is a, a verse we all know. That blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, no seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whether and whatever he does shall prosper. So there is, but uh, as we talked about restoration, this restoration when it comes, because when you give your life to Christ, there must be a turning point. The only way that God can help you to get rid of your past wastage mm -hmm. and forget about the time which you wasted, as we we, we all uh, read about it in uh, Joel two twenty five to twenty eight about restoration and God pouring his spirit upon all flesh, our God is able to restore us. And he forgives and forgets the, the sins of the past. But now, the moment you give yourself and commit yourself fully as Psalms 1 to 3 says, that the moment you dwell not in the counsel of the ungodly, and you turn around and begin not to stand in the, in the, in the, in the path of sinners, and you decide to commit yourself to sit not in the seat of the scornful, nor delighting in the law, and, and, and you now begin to delight in the law of the Lord, that you are going to be like a tree planted by the waters. Now, if you are planted by the rivers, by the, by the, by the, the, the waters, by the, what was it, the rivers of water, if you are planted by this river of the water, so what happens is the water is flowing through you as a plant, and you begin to bear fruits and bear fruits and bear fruits, whether it is in season or out of season, God is able to restore more than what you lost. That's yeah. why, and that's why we have to understand one thing, that believing in God, it comes to total surrender. It has to be a total surrender because you know what you've been through. You know what you've done. You know this, the sins. You, you've you had testimonies of people who were murderers. They were killed and all that. But they came to a point and said, look, I know I killed this man, 
but I have not, I cannot bring this man back to life. I have to let this thing go off and begin now this new work of sitting not in the counsel of the ungodly anymore. So let me delight in God's word and in God's presence that the rivers, that the waters of the river may flow through me as a plant, as a new plant and begin to uh, yield fruits in season and out of season. I know our time is now really flying. When it gets to into discussion, time really runs. Uh, yeah, so let's let's look at First uh, Chronicles 12 and 32. It's actually also in line with what we've been discussing about uh, being able to understand the time. First Chronicles 12 and 32. Yeah, so the Bible says in First Chronicles, you have, you have it, Phoebe? First Chronicles, uh, 12, what? 12, 30, 32. Um, it says, um, it says, and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. Amen. Can you continue? Amen. They understood. Was that it? Yeah, yeah Jesus, that's it. Yeah. So they understood. They had the understanding of the times. When you have the understanding of the times, then you will remain in and, and walk in God's purpose. You will achieve what God has already planned for you. He says, I know the plans I have for you. It's not you who have your own plans. I know you have your own plans, yes. But he says, I know the plans that I have for you. So then you decide, oh God, you know, I know you have the you have better plan, you have some plans for me, but I think I have better plans for myself right now. So you uh, just keep the plans that you have for me. Only to walk and realize walking about walking out of the plan of God to try and make yourself comfortable only exposes you now into all these uh, challenges of life, spiritual and physical, that you end up being, uh, you know, you, 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 you are beaten. I mean, you, you can't even stand on your two feet because the world is unforgiving. The enemy has only three, 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 uh, three, three missions to do, to steal, kill, and destroy. So he will come, lure you, and steal for you from you, try to be very close to you, kill you, and destroy everything around you. But our God will give you life because he has a good plan for you. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Hebrews 2, verse 2. Hebrews 2 and 2. The time does not wait for anyone. We have to understand our times and do everything according to the time that we have. Hebrews 2 and 2. And someone else should open John 9 and 4. You may read Hebrews 2. Okay. I have it. Yes, please. Go Hebrews ahead. Two, Hebrews 2 and 2. For mm -hmm. if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. That's Hebrews 2 and 2, correct? Yes. Okay. So that says, for if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. And so the reward comes when we walk in obedience. And it's very uh, easy for us to walk, to live our lives in disobedience. And I know of people who say, oh, you know, I'll wait until my last day, then I, I'll, I'll confess I want to go to heaven. I mean, it's like you want to live your own life and then buy a ticket to heaven. Right. But are you going to get the crown? <laughs> when you confess, God, God will forgive you. I can't say God will not forgive you. 
He is a, he's a forgiving God. He's a, he's a merciful God. He'll forgive you. But That's you know, possible. everyone has his own crowd. They, you get your own reward. And so mm -hmm. even the rewards that, are, 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 that have, been, have been spoken through the, through the angels, the, the crown that has been set ahead of, I mean, for everyone, you're going to get your crown if you walk and do what God has called you to do. You know, like now we are doing outreach. We are doing, uh, uh, you know, outreach and evangelism, reaching out to souls, at least, you know, reaching out to four souls by the end of the year. That is a great, is part of the great, it actually, that is the great commission. And that mm -hmm. comes with a reward. And mm -hmm. the reward cannot be given to somebody who says, I'll wait until my last minute and try to sneak into heaven. Mm -mm. You want to let me try it now. So if your reward comes, it comes in full for uh, uh, doing God's, uh, you know, God's work. And mm -hmm. the last one, and then I bring our senior pastor to, um, to, uh, to wrap it up and pray for us is John 9 and 4. John 9 and 4. How did you come, really? He says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, he, you have a question? Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll let Pastor Sophie ask the question. And if there's anybody else, please do. And we'll let our senior pastor respond to those questions and uh, wrap it up. Uh, I have a question. Um, when we talk about, we, talk, we just read about obedience and disobedience. And um, I'm wondering if we, if we don't walk in the obedience with the time that God has given unto us, or we don't walk in faithfulness with time, because Jesus said, uh, if you can't be faithful to big things, if you are not faithful to small things. So time, an example of time. God has given us time for us to, just as, as a test to, 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 to test our, 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 our in, 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 in intelligence and our integrity and our faithfulness to time. So if we don't, if we are not faithful in time, are we, can we, can we, can we be called sinners because we are not faithful with time? When we are unfaithful in other things, that may be seen. But if we are unfaithful with time, can it be an offense too? Uh, Pastor Berry talked about to help our children emulating what we do. And if all the time they see us not walking in the faithfulness of time, is it possible that we may um, we may be leading them in a wrong way or no, they should just obey. As a team. I was hired by Kylie. Those, those are my questions. You've done a great job. Kylie was killed. Any other question? By Courtney. Danielle, Phoebe. I saw the I can't. Thing. I can hear because I hear Sorry. talking. I, I couldn't hear what she said. Oh yeah. You so me? you want to repeat what you saw? You asked. So, well, I'm sorry. Time. Um. Yeah, I, I was just asking about um, if we are not if we are not faithful in time, like we say, we our our meeting starts at this time and ends up at this time, but we don't start at the same that same time we said, and we expect to finish the 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 the, the, the right time, or we start the right time and don't, we don't finish at the right time. Is that not being unfaithful to the time? 
like, like today, like today our meeting was to start at six and most of us yeah, came in at 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we expect yeah, like, to finish yeah. at seven. Like, and there's some um, people who come early, as early as before even six. And we expect now because we want to, we want, we want to carry people, carry on those who have come late. So are we, are we doing, are, are we being, are we being fair to those people who are respecting time and us, we are not yeah. being faithful to the time. So is unfaithful to time a sin too? And us being unfaithful to time. Can it affect even the generation that we are bringing up as our children? Maybe yeah, not, I don't think being respectful of the time. And I, I want to apologize for being late. I, I, I say, yeah. I, I, and I, and I, I agree think... with being late is disrespectful. Okay, that was Janelle. Uh, Fimi, you're saying something? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I said, you know, like I, 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 I was saying, you know, what do we do? We're supposed to do holy unto the Lord. And I would say, yeah, we um, fall short. I have fallen short and um, it's wrong. But as far as his grace and mercy, um, God knows the hearts of men and um, no one's perfect. But I think people should or well, individuals should sometime try to if, if that person is late or if that person is not there, um, as far as being faithful or being somewhere at church, I think that individual is, if that person is concerned, I think they should kind of like reach because something could be going on. Something could be going on or, you know, just kind of like, uh, I can speak for me. What's going on with Sister Phoebe? I haven't seen Phoebe this and this, or I haven't, you know, it could be a reason why or whatever. And, like I said, God knows the hearts of men. It's according to your faith. It's according to your heart and in you and your your desire. You know, you know where you're supposed to be at. And like um, Pastor um, Barry said, we are accountable. We are accountable for our shortcomings. And you know, all I can say is, I'm I'm the first to say, oh God, you know, forgive me. I failed. I fell short. And we're supposed to get it right and do right. If we're in position, are we supposed to be on time? We are supposed to be there. Great. Janelle, your hand is raised. Yes, what I was going to share is two things. I think that piggyback on what she was saying, that she is correct. It does depend on the individual. We should be accountable. It's important to start on time. Mm -hmm. Being late is disrespectful, though. And at the same time, at the same time, it's um, we should also be respectful as when you all are teaching or when someone else is speaking, we should mute our um, we should mute our um, our mics so that we could be fair and be respectful of hearing each other speak as well. So that was all I wanted to share. And yeah, and we should we should be on time. And when we are late, we might want to maybe communicate with one another. And maybe when we're late, we shouldn't be speaking until later in, in the, toward the end, you know, maybe be able to give a comment or speak up to share a scripture, but it is disrespectful to be late. That is all I wanted to share. Thank you for allowing me to share. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you, Sister Janelle, and um, every contributor, Sister Phoebe. God bless you. You know, um, I'm sure Sister Sophie's question is not to cause us to get emotional and being have to feel that, oh, I was late, so I need to apologize. No, because um, we must... The topic is about understanding the time. And we must know that time is a common gift that God gave any human. Humanity, both rich and poor, that is the same gift to all. 
the same time, in terms of in a day, there's 24 hours. In a year, there's 365 or 366 days. So how we how we we, we use that time determines uh, what we make of our life. You know. So if you are late to the purpose of God for your life, then that purpose becomes delayed and may not may never be attained you know uh so time could for many can be a blessing when you use it right but it could also be a curse depending on how we value the time and we use it we must understand that time is life when you waste time, you are wasting life, your life. The passing of time is a passing of life. Because one thing that you can never go back to is time. One thing that you cannot take back is time. When we have a better understanding of what time really means, then we begin to value every little bit of it that God has given us the opportunity to have. The passing of time represents the passing of life. Time is very precious because when time stops, that's when life also stop. So how you use your time? No wonder Psalm 90 verse 12 says, Lord, teach me to number my days that I may apply my heart to wisdom, that I can value the time that I have, that I can take the full advantage for the purpose that you have created me. Because God created time for a specific purpose. If you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 6, it says, there's every purpose. For every purpose in life, there is time. For every purpose, there is time. When you miss your time, you have lost that purpose. And sometimes you cannot play cash up. So in answer to, to Pastor Sophie, you know, when you don't give value to time, you are only messing up your life you are only messing up your destiny but one thing is that as paul said there are some mistakes you've lost time you cannot win it back but where you are now if you decide to start moving to start taking positive steps in philippians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 i will not look back to the time I've lost. I will not look time to the mistakes I've made, but I'm going to be reaching forward, moving forward to the mark of the eye calling of God, of the Lord in my life. I think we need to, if everyone will value time, then we'll be able to come to meetings early because time is life. And that's one thing I want us to take home tonight. When you lose time, you are losing life. When you waste time, you are wasting your life. When you, when you are complacent with issues regarding time, you are being complacent with the purpose of God for your life. He said concerning that 
in Ecclesiastes that we should we should make a when there's time because there's a time when darkness is going to come at that time you cannot there's nothing you can do again at that time you cannot you cannot many people are biting the fingers of uh, of regret oh had i known i would have done this when i still had strength i could have gone back to school when i still had strength uh, i could have uh, started instead of me just sitting down and complaining and giving excuses you know so each time we still have on half is the time for us to make the best of it it is not a time for us to to wallow in regret but it's time for us to value it and to take full advantage of it because what we do with our time not only affect us also affect people that are tied to our life and to our destiny our children our loved ones what we do with our time affects them you know uh in um job chapter 14 verse 5 to 7 if we can read that as we close job 14 5 to 7 Uh, go ahead uh, job 14 5 to 7 since his days are determined the number of his month is with you you have appointed his limit so that he cannot pass look away from him that he may rest till like a hard man he finishes his day for there is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease praise the lord hallelujah my my my, my emphasis here is the first verse seeing his days are determined the number of his months are with thee so the number of our days are already determined by God, but how we take full advantage of that time to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God that we will be able to say at the end, just like Paul said, I have run the race, I have finished the course, and now awaits me a crown of righteousness. At this time, if you look at your life, can you really Say you have really take full advantage of the time that God has given you. If you look at your value of time, can you really say you have given time its utmost value in your life? Like I said, to the rich, to the poor, time is the same is the same gift of time to the young and to the old is the same gift of time and god specifically carved out time out of eternity to give us a purpose to give us a chance to express ourselves and to make full proof of our of our uh, humanity God created time out of eternity for you. Otherwise, if we remain all in eternity, then we have no purpose. We cannot achieve anything, no purpose. Everything is already determined for us. So now those purpose 
how are you turning them into goals? Because the difference between purpose and goal is goals is putting time to your purpose, assigning time to it. Not just saying, oh, I have this dream. Okay, thank God. But now you need to set goals. How do you, do you have a short-term goal, a medium-term goal, a long-term goal? In the next one year, what do you, what is your, what are your goals? In the next five years, what is it? In the next 10 years, that is how we are able to accomplish uh, our purpose and uh, within specified time as, and it allows us to also remain focused so that we are able to value time and not waste time. We are able to, 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 to invest time and not waste it. God will help us as we take this to heart. So as a ministry, we don't, we don't want to waste people's time. We want to, when we say service starts this, we want to start at that time because we know time is of essence because it's valuable. There are people, there are organizations, there are churches, they, if they say their service starts at 11, they expect it to be maybe 12, 30, because they know people will come, but we must value that one person that says, oh, my time is precious. I value my time and I'm going to be there at that time. And if it's that one person that is there, it's only right for us to, to, to value his time enough and to, 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 to do what God has called to do at that time. I pray that God will give us grace and, um, and help us even through this in the name of Jesus. Do we have any questions before we close? Thank you, yes. Sister Janelle. You're um, welcome. That that was deep. I feel like you were talking to me personally. So thank you. <laughs> it made sense. You're welcome, ma'am. <laughs> I'm talking to everyone, including myself, because we all need it. If we are all, if we can all walk in that same sense, I tell you, we will all be better off, and this life will be a better place for everybody. Okay. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, we thank you, Lord. Tonight we give you praise. You, you ask us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. You said in your word that we should redeem the time, because time waits for no man. Lord, we ask, Lord, he said, the time of ignorance you can forgive. Now that we know, now that you have opened our eyes, we pray that we will honor the time you've given us and will take full advantage of it in the name of Jesus. Every com complacency, every lukewardness, every wasting of time that could be a value added to our destiny, Lord, we, dis we ask the Lord that spirit, we cancel that spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit to do what we need to do in the day so that we, so that when night come, we will not bite our, our tongue and our fingers in regret. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. We commit our children as they value the time of their, of their youthfulness of their teenage years for them to, to take heed to the counsel of their parents, to take heed to the instructions. Many of them wants to become old, wants to start taking instruction, uh, decisions by themselves, not knowing that it is the time for them to, to sit, to receive words of wisdom so that they can, it can be added value to their life. Lord, we ask the Lord, you open their eyes of understanding, to understand the value of time and to walk according to the purpose of God in their life. Blessed be your name, Father. Receive all, receive all praise, honor, and adoration 
concerning our life and let our life be a testimony to others to behold in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So God bless you again on Monday next week. We'll be doing our last subject for this month. That is, it is not yet time to rest. That will be our topic. And you can actually find this manual on our website. Covenantfaithfamily.org or RG. You find the manual in there. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, God bless you all. Amen. God bless you. See you on Wednesday. God bless good night, you. everybody. Bye. Yeah, good night. Bye. Ah, ah. Now, wow. <laughs> you are the, my wife was there. My wife was there. <laughs> my wife. <wow. laughs> Where were you? <laughs> I think mean, she was fixing Timmy's hair. Hey, it's gonna, this is Timmy's phone. Is Maggie's phone or is Timmy that changed the name? Where are people? Nothing.